Hello, good people. As you know, password cracking can get really convoluted depending on what kind of password you're trying to crack and the, and the hardware you have available and how wide your search space is. So it really helps if you use every bit of uh, uh, computation power that's available to you, especially if you have GPUs, then those can really speed up your password cracking process. Again, passwords are cracked for all kinds of security analysis and assessments, and so uh, this, that's an important topic. So I thought I'd share something about uh, using GPUs with Hashcat to speed up the password uh, cracking process. All right, so I'm connected to my school's high-performance computing center, so I can show you how Hashcat can use GPUs to speed up the cracking process. I've downloaded Hashcat in the Documents folder over here, and I'm going to access this folder in the terminal now. So as you can see, there are multiple nodes in this high-performance computing center, and they have different loads that they're under at different times. We want to connect to one of these nodes and then use the node's GPUs to crack passwords in Hashcat. So notice that the green nodes have GPUs on them, while the other uh, white nodes do not have a GPU. So for our purposes, we'll be using green nodes only. Different nodes have different GPUs available on them. For example, this particular node has the NVIDIA K20 GPU available on it. So let's use this one first. So now what we're trying to do is SSH into that first development node with the Tesla K20 GPU on it. Uh, by the way, I didn't have to authenticate because I had already authenticated before, so otherwise you would never leave SSH open like that. So let's go to the right folder. Uh, I want to go into uh, Documents and then Hashcat, and from here we should be able to execute Hashcat. So there it is. We have Hashcat running. What we want to do next is see the man pages or the help menu and see what we can what what information we can gather about it checking the help menu is important for any tool but specifically for hashcat there's so many attack types and hash types and uh, character sets that you really need to be taking a look at its help menu if you're new to it next uh, hashcat i will let you see what kind of devices are loaded as you can see on this particular development node, I have two GPUs available. They're both NVIDIA Tesla K20M GPUs. And uh, of course, I want to see what kind of load I can, how far I can push these GPUs. For that, we're going to use the benchmark switch with Hashcat and specify a particular hash type that we want to check for. So in this case, I'm checking for MD5 hashes, for example. And this will, because all hash types are going to have different speeds. And uh, for this particular case, I see that this node gives me 6,000 million hashes per second. 6,000 million MD5 hashes per second. So I test it again for WPA. By the way, if you don't specify a hash type, it's going to check for all hash types. But that's going to take a while. As you know, hashes are all one-way encodings, and they all have different algorithms, so they all have different computation speeds. So it looks like I can do 120,000 hashes per second, 120,000 WPA2 hashes per second. All right, so let's exit this machine, and now we're going to go into another development node and hopefully this will be a lot faster than the last one. This time we're going to be going to the development node that uses eight NVIDIA Tesla K80 GPUs. So let's SSH into this machine instead. All right, now we're in. Let's uh, access the folder where Hashcat is and uh, try to crack our first password. First, we check the devices and we can see that there are eight GPUs as we expected, uh, Tesla 
K80. And so this should be significantly better than the last node in terms of performance. So we can check that quickly using the benchmark again. Uh, we do the same thing we did uh, for the purpose of comparison. So the first thing we're going to try is MD5 signified by the zero over there. And look at that. That's significantly better. So the overall speed of the eight GPUs combined together is 28,000 million hashes per second. And then for WPA2, it looks like the overall speed we got was 570,000 hashes per second. So that's better as we expected. It's better than the last node. So let's try to carry out the rest of our experiments on this node. So looking at the help menu again, we see the different modes, we see the different character sets, we see the different attack modes, we see the different hash types, we see the different character sets. And uh, this is all, it's, it's important to familiarize ourselves with these uh, details before we try to crack any hashes. So let's try to generate and uh, an MD5 hash. Just for testing purposes, we're going to generate an MD5 hash and then we're going, going to try to crack it. As you know, hashes are one-way encoding, so the only way you can get the original string back from a hash is using this kind of hash cracking. So what we do is we've generated this, uh, what, what I've done is I've generated hash of the string Pranchu and um, I'm going to now try to crack that hash. By the way, I just removed that hashcat.pot file because that contains all of your previously cracked hashes. And uh, I've cracked Pranchu before, so I don't want it to uh, pick it up from there. So now what we're trying to do is we're just trying to specify the attack mode as 3, which is the brute force attack, or also known as the mask attack in the case of hashcat. And then, um, and then M0 signifies that this is an MD5 hash. And then next, I'm trying to tell Hashcat to try all lowercase letters such that the overall size of the string to try is 7. Hashcat will now initiate a session where it will try to crack this hash using the mask that I specified, which is use a string of, of which is 7 characters long, and all those characters are alphabets, lowercase alphabets. As we can see, it immediately cracked the hash. That's because we have enough computation power on this machine to do that. It recovered one out of one digest. Tells you the overall speed. Looks like it's uh, 7,200 something million hashes per second. And the mask that we used is specified there is seven characters long. A, st a status is cracked. The session was named Hashcat. If you don't specify a session name, it's going to be named Hashcat. The MD5 and the corresponding password is next to it. So as I was saying earlier, Hashcat stores these cracked passwords in a file that it, that it calls hashcat.potfile. So if you output the contents of that file, you should be able to see the hash and the corresponding password next to it. By the way, you can also use the hashcat show command to see the password, the cracked hashes and their corresponding passwords. Okay, so what if you knew part of the password? What if you didn't have to brute force every single character, but you, but you already know part of it? For example, in this case, I know the starting three letters in this password. You can just specify that in your mask. So you will type out the actual letters that you know are part of the password and then the rest can be brute forced. As you can see I already had the passwords in the pod file so it did not try to crack it so I removed the the pod file and try this again and this time I changed that to PR1 which is not correct so it's going to now 
go through every single thing in that in those combinations and return with nothing because the password is not present in the mask that we specified that's why it's so important to specify the right mask it tried all possible combinations quite quickly but it couldn't find the um, a matching password I was talking about character sets earlier. You can use L for lowercase, U for uppercase, D for digits, and then you can use S for special characters. You can use A for a combination of all of those. So remember these character sets when you're creating your mass. We can also check what kind of output hashcat generates when we use these characters uh, character sets in these masks by using the standard out switch which will actually show us what kind of strings hashcat is creating in this particular case I'm using brute force and I'm using uh, I'm telling it to generate all digits uh, all combinations of two digits so those are the strings that hashcat generated based on that mask specification so I had two positions and both of them were digits so you can play with variations of these where you can specify a digit with a lowercase uh, alphabet or a digit with all combinations of all kinds of characters in this particular case I have a digit with all kinds of characters so as you can see we see uh, a digit with space, a digit with other kinds of special characters, a digit with lowercase alphabets, a digit with an uppercase alphabet, and so on. In this way, we can generate dictionaries using Hashcat by redirecting this from terminal to an actual file. So in this case, I specified three lowercase alphabets and they're all being combinations of three lowercase alphabets and those all of those strings are being redirected to a file that I'm calling lowercase three letters dot dictionary and that can be used as a uh, as a dictionary in a dictionary based password attack so now if you check the contents of that file you'll see there are different combinations of three-letter lowercase alphabets. The total lines in that file, so the total words in that file are 17,576. Now Hashcat can also be used in an incremental mode where you do not know the specific uh, uh, length of the password. For example, you don't know if it's seven characters long or if it's eight characters long so then you go by a range and in this case the increment minimum and increment maximum will allow you to specify what that range is so in this particular case you're seeing that I specified the minimum to be 6 and the maximum to be 8 let's first generate a hash to be cracked So what we're going to do is specify a string and then calculate an MD5 hash of that string and then try to crack that hash. Let's say that the string is am I root yet or just am I root. And then let's calculate the MD5 sum of that string. So that's the MD5 sum. We take that and we ask hashcat to crack it in incremental mode where it'll try string lengths uh, of from 6 to 8 and then the mask that we're specifying is let's say we we try all uh, we, we try combinations of all available characters uh, so that will be digits lowercase uppercase special characters and everything so actually let's let's change this to include one special character and that gives us a completely new MD5 sum, completely different MD5 sum. So let's specify this 
MD5 sum over here and then try to crack it in incremental mode, trying all possible characters. Now that is a huge search space. So that's going to take an incredibly long amount of time, even with the GPUs that we have. And so for that reason, we're going to have this uh, particular search running for a while. Uh, at any point during this process, you can of course, press S to see the status of what it's trying to crack. And you can see that because we specified all possible characters, the candidates are so starting from a string length of six. And then it's trying all possible characters in that string length. And that's going to take a long time. You can at any point pause this process simply by pressing P and that will stop the cracking or actually pause the cracking for a little bit. And then of course you can use R to resume it. But what's better is if you save a checkpoint. That means that you can save a checkpoint and then you can power off your machine and then resume that same cracking session at a later time. So once you press C, it will enable the checkpoint, but it will quit at the next restore point update. So you'll have to wait for a little bit. And now it's saved a checkpoint to disk. So you can safely resume this session at a later time. Checkpoints are saved in files called something.restore, session name.restore. So we have two session uh, restoration files in this particular directory. One is the present restore point that I created. Because I didn't specify a session name, it's just called hashcat.restore and one is from earlier. Now in order to resume the session, I'll have to specify the session name. And because I didn't specify a session name, the default name was hashcat. And then I'll have to specify the switch restore. So it's now starting hashcat in restore mode. It'll basically pick up where it left off. And so for lengthy searches, you can actually safely turn off your machine in the middle of a search if you want to. So as we can see, it's now resumed that same search using the restore point that we had created. I'm not going to quit this using Q. Let's try to crack some other type of hash using Hashcat now. We've been working with MD5 so far. So let's try to crack a WPA hash. I have a WPA hash file over here. This is a capture file. And we can supply this capture file to Hashcat and watch it crack the hash. I'm going in brute force mode right now. By the way, if you want to change that from brute force to dictionary mode attack, then you can specify A0. The M2500 specifies that I'm trying to use, uh, I'm trying to crack a WPA hash. So I provided the capture file, which contains the WPA handshake. And, uh, and I specify a mask. And Hashcat has now started the process of cracking that WPA hash. Now, depending on the search space, this can take any amount of time. But the uh, GPUs really do increase the computations per second and get you be better results. So now it's going through the combinations that I specified. Notice that I specified the first three to be digits, the next to be a lowercase alphabet the one after that to be an uppercase alphabet, and then the last three to be digits again. So those are the different combinations that it's trying, as we can see. One final thing I want to show you are the rules that Hashcat has. So if you look at the contents of the Hashcat, Hashcat directory, you'll see the, a folder called rules. If you go in that directory, you'll see the different rules that are already available as part of your 
hashcat installation and these rules specify some modification to the mask that you're trying. So let's create a, a dummy dictionary. Let's call it MI, uh, let's put two words, actually three words into this. And so this becomes our dictionary. And now we're going to try to provide a rule set to hashcat. Uh, we're gonna use one of the preset rules we're going to change these three words in the dictionary to leadspeak. So leadspeak has simple substitutions and uh, simple replacements. For example, replace A with a 4. And so we, we, we see the combinations that it generates for us by making those replacements. And we see am I root yet has been changed, uh, Pranchu has been changed, and uh, the changes that it has done are consistent with the rules specified in the rule set, which is if it's A, change it to at, and, and so on. All right, uh, well, that's all I have for you today. Um, uh, using Hashcat with GPUs is a really satisfying ex experience if you have a good GPU or a set of good GPUs, and uh, it can really speed up your password cracking process. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.